Hello again. So good to be with you. And I, I've got a great message for you today, uh, if the Lord will help me. And uh, I just want to tell you, here's the title of the message. Something big, big, big is about to happen. And I want to talk to you about how to be ready for it. Something big is about to happen. You can make that into a song. Something big, big, big is about to happen. I wrote that song, actually. I made that up myself. But seriously, I, we're poised on the brink of a major event. And the world is so unprepared for it. And I know, I, I want to talk to you. The Bible clearly says that there is an event going to happen at the end of this age when the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come back in the clouds and there's going to be a trumpet call and the dead are going to come out of the graves and every born again Christian, not every everybody that says they're a Christian, but every person that's actually born again that's alive on this earth is going to, is going to be caught up to be with the Lord in the clouds. And I want to read you some scripture about that where Paul actually says, Behold, I'll show you a mystery. And uh, they didn't know about the rapture at that time. And Paul uh, reveals that God has given him revelation of it. And I want to read you a uh, couple of verses out of the contemporary version of the, it's called the message. So it's going to sound a little bit different, but I, li I kind of like the way it reads. And it says this, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at verse 51, Paul says, But let me tell you something wonderful, a mystery. I'll probably never fully understand it, Paul says. We are not all going to die, but we are all going to be changed. You will hear a blast to end all blasts from a trumpet, and in the time that you look up and blink your eyes, it's over. On signal from that trumpet from heaven, the dead will be up out of their graves beyond the reach of death, never to die again. At the same moment, in the same way, we'll all be changed. In the resurrection scheme of things, this has to happen. Everything perishable taken off the shelves and replaced by the imperishable, this mortal replaced by immortality. Praise God. He's talking about an event that's going to happen. And I, I just, uh, you know, some people, we, sometimes we say, well, and we call it the rapture. And that is talking about when the church is going to be raptured up into the clouds to be with the Lord. Church will be taken to heaven for seven years. And the great tribulation period will start on the earth. And it will be a horrible time on this earth. And the earth is getting ready for that. The Bible actually has twice as many scriptures about the Lord's second return than it has about his first appearing on this earth a little over 2,000 years ago. And so I want to tell you something big, big, big is about to happen. And you need to be ready for it. And, and, and don't just think that I'm just talking to, about, to sinners, and I am talking to people that are not Christians, uh, primarily today, but you need to make sure that you have actually been born again because that when that trumpet sounds, the Holy Spirit is going to send, flash out a power uh, through around the world and it's going to change instantly every true Christian on this planet. Every person that's died their bodies are going to come out of the ground. If they went into the grave as a Christian, their bodies are going to come out of the ground and they're going to be caught up with the Lord. And we're in the, uh, the King James Version says, uh, in the twinkling of an eye, it's going to be just like that. I mean, it's just, uh, there's not going to be time to get ready for it. 
You need to get ready for it now. And so I want to just uh, spend a little time today. I want to go through some things that are happening in the earth uh, that, that show us clearly that we're living right at this time when it could happen any minute, any moment. It could happen today. So uh, I'm going to talk about a few things that are, that are presently happening. And the first thing that I want to talk about today is uh, the rebirth and the appearance on this earth of the nation of Israel. And uh, I, I've, said, I've said many times that the greatest miracle I've ever witnessed on this earth is the rebirth of the nation of Israel. And I want to tell you when it happened back in 1948, I was only like four years old. Uh, so uh, I, didn't, I didn't even realize the significance of it. My father was a minister of the gospel at that time. And uh, he, he fully understood what happened on that miraculous day when uh, the gavel was struck in Tel Aviv, Israel, and uh, Israel became a nation again uh, after almost 2,000 years of being dispersed and not even being a, a nation on the earth. Amazing, amazing miracle. And uh, Jesus talked about it. Jesus prophesied about it on, in Matthew, the 24th chapter, verse 32. Jesus said, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When the branch is yet tender and puts on leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when you see all these things, know that it's near even at the doors. Verily, I say unto you, this generation, the generation that sees the fig tree put on leaves, will not pass until all these things are fulfilled. And then Jesus says this, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. In other words, this is going to happen. Now, if you're familiar with what had went on at that time, Jesus is in Jerusalem. He's getting ready to go to the cross and be crucified. He's walking up to Jerusalem one day. He sees a fig tree. He goes over. He's going to uh, pick a fig off of it. He's hungry. There's no figs on the tree. He curses the tree. And the next day they come by and the tree is shriveled up and died. And so the Jesus, the next day after they see the fig tree died, Jesus says, learn a, learn a parable of the fig tree. He's talking about that fig tree right there. He says, when you see it put on leaves, you know that all of these things are, are going to be fulfilled the generation that sees it put on leaves is not going to pass away till all of these end time events have occurred. Now the fig tree that he's talking about is not actually that fig tree. The fig tree is a parable about the nation of Israel, which was going to pass away in, uh, in uh, the year uh, A.D. 70, and Jesus is giving a lesson about the fact that that fig tree that passes away is eventually going to be reborn. It's going to put on leaves. And he says the generation that sees that. Now, the Old Testament has numerous verses that refers to the nation of Israel as the fig tree. I believe every one of his followers, when he gave that parable, they knew he wasn't just talking about that fig tree. He was talking about that fig tree being symbolic of the nation of Israel. Matter of fact, you can see that in the, in the, the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 10 through 13. I want to read those verses to you because uh, it, it's, uh, you'll see that he's talking about his people being the fig tree. And we've been grafted into that. So, as Christians. 
Song of Solomon, I don't know whether you're familiar with it, but the Song of Solomon is a love song, and it's about a man and a woman that are in love with one another. And it is symbolic of Christ and his church. So I want to read this. It says, My beloved spoke and said to me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. For lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. Listen to verse 13. The fig tree puts forth her green figs and vines with tender grapes, give a good smell, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Now that scripture is talking about the fig tree and, uh, and he's saying to the fig tree, come away, rise up and come away. God's fig tree uh, miraculously, after it had disappeared as a nation in AD 70, dispersed the Jews throughout the world. Miraculously in 1948, it's declared to be a country again. And folks, I want to tell you, when you just look on the news and you see that flag flying in the breeze in, in Israel, and it's the Star of David flag, it's, the, it's God's burning bush to the earth right now. It's God's burning bush. Because when that fig tree bloomed, the generation that saw that, Jesus said, will not all pass away until all of the end time prophetic events have occurred. And that's not just the rapture, folks. That's the seven year tribulation period and the battle of Armageddon. So uh, we, we are so close. The rapture could happen any day. Something big, big, big is about to happen. And we need to make sure we're ready. And I want to talk about how, how to be ready. Now, when you say, well, that generation will not pass away, we, one of the things that comes to mind is, well, how long is a generation? What's a generation in, in God's eyes? And so uh, I, I just want to take you to Psalms chapter 90 and verse 10, and, and here's what it says about generations. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. Now, that's 70. And if by reason of strength they may be four score years, that would be 80, yet is their strength and labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. So, I, you know, if we, uh, I, now folks, we're not date setting. We're not going to date set. Uh, I, I see some of these things happening. I can remember being in, in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and we drive along looking for a Mexican restaurant to eat at. And here's a sign on the bus bench. Uh, and it says, Jesus is coming on May 21st. Now that was about probably uh, 10 years ago. And he hasn't come yet. Jesus said, no man knows the day. But the Bible also says that that day will not come uh, that the children of light, Christians, true Christians, it'll not catch them unaware. They will be aware of the time that it's about to happen. And that's what I'm sharing with you today. So Israel is back as a nation. Every end time prophecy is to be fulfilled in Israel in the city of Jerusalem. Armageddon is fought in, in the nation of Israel. And we're seeing things happening right now that uh, make you think, well, uh, is that getting ready to happen? I, I'm telling you, some of the things with Russia uh, invading uh, their country to the south of them is, uh, is uh, kind of scary because it looks like Gog may be getting ready to go down into the Holy Land. And so, uh, oh, we're just living in times. There's so many things that are going on. So many things are happening. And, and folks, I want to tell you, the Bible says this, 
that as it was in the days of Noah, they were eating and drinking and giving in marriage and just having fun. And I'm, pu I'm putting my own thoughts on some of that, but they were just going on with life. And, and all the signs was happening all around them. Noah was building an ark and they laughed at him and, and, made, and, and were scorned at what he was doing. He was a fool and, and they just kept living their life. And that's exactly what's happening today. Folks, every sign there is in the Bible, and there's multiple of them. I can't spend very much time on them uh, this morning, but every one of them is being fulfilled right at the same time. And that's a key because uh, my, my old dad, great man of God, he preached about the coming of the Lord and he was expecting it to happen in his day. And uh, it didn't, he went, he went into the grave and, and uh, I believe his spirit and soul's in heaven with the Lord right now, his body lays, lays in the grave and it's gonna come out uh, when this great event that's about to happen uh, transpires. And so Israel is there and uh, it's ready for the invasion. It's ready for Armageddon. Uh, folks, I'm telling you, uh, the, the thing that may cause uh, Russia to come right on through Croatia and, uh, and come down and invade the Holy Land is if Israel attacks Iran, uh, it, it may start the whole thing. We're living right with all of this on the verge of happening. So Israel's there, and that's the key to every end time prophecy. Jesus said, when you see all of the signs happening, coming to the, together, converging at the same time. See, my dad saw a lot of signs, but he didn't see all the signs. There were just some of the signs. That's what's, that's what's happened in years past. Uh, we could see some of the signs taking place. Uh, even when Israel became a nation again, man, everybody said it, it, uh, it's going to happen. But all of the signs were not there yet. See, the technology was not where the, uh, the Antichrist could give the mark of the beast at that time. There was not technology where the whole world could see the two witnesses from heaven uh, killed on the streets of Jerusalem at that time. But now, every single sign, listen to me, every single sign given in the Word of God is happening at this moment at the same time. And Jesus said, when you see all of these signs, he said, look up because your redemption draws nigh. Now, I'm telling you, we can, we can go right on, child of God, if you're lukewarm in the Lord and you're, you're just playing church, I want to tell you, you better, you better get back to the Lord, uh, get, your, get, your, get your spirit and your soul seeking after God and be ready. If you're, uh, if you're not a Christian, I want to tell you, you better lay aside all the things of this world. It's going to happen like that. It's going to be over. And the world will be thrown into the clutches of the Antichrist. And the church will be taken out of this world to be with the Lord in the clouds for seven years, in heaven for seven years. Antichrist is going to come to power in this world because the church is what's hindering him right now. Antichrist is going to come to power in the world and uh, it's going to be, Jesus said, that seven year period called the day of the Lord or the great tribulation period Jesus said, there's never been a time like it ever before. There will never, ever be a time like it again. Two-thirds of the world's population will die in seven years. It's going to be a horrible, horrible time on this planet. I want to tell you, you better be ready. 
Now, uh, we see Israel back in the land. I want to tell you another thing that, uh, and I'm not going to get finished with this this morning. I want to tell you another thing that uh, is, uh, we can know that the, the, it's time. And that's the, the, the biblical chronology uh, proves that we're living at the time of the second coming of the Lord Jesus. You say, well, well, Brother Phil, how do, you, how do you know that? Well, you can go to your Bible, and you see your Bible uh, gives us the years. It gives us the lineage all the way from Adam all the way to Jesus Christ. Uh, now, there's thousands upon hundreds of thousands of people that are being born, born but the Bible only is concerned with giving us a history of the lineage uh, of, of those that are in the lineage of the Lord Jesus. And so it gives us chronological evidence in the, in, the, in the names and the age that they lived. You can track it all the way back, all the way from Adam. You can track it all the way to Jesus Christ. Now, I want to tell you. If you go back and you do that, you'll find out that it was approximately 2,000 years from Adam until the call, uh, until Abraham. About 2,000 years. Uh, Adam was created, and, and you, can, you can check it out. I can't remember the name of the person, the scholar that tracked it all down. It was a little bit less than 4,000. It was 3,900 and some years uh, uh, before Christ that Adam was, was uh, created. And from Adam's creation to Abraham was approximately 2,000 years. From Abraham to Jesus Christ's birth, you can go biblical chronology, folks. You can, if you're interested enough, you can check this out and make sure I'm telling you the truth. Was approximately 2,000 years. So Jesus Christ appeared, was born in this earth approximately 4,000 years after the creation of Adam. You say, well, why is that important? Well, because Peter reveals that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Creation, if you go back to the creation story, uh, you'll see that Jesus, uh, or that God creates the world in six days. And, and uh, that's not 6,000 years, that's six days, but it, it's figurative of of each one of those being a thousand years, but it was one day in that sense. But he creates in six days. The seventh day, the Bible says God rested. Now I want to tell you, God was not tired. He did. God doesn't get tired. He didn't rest because he was tired. That's all a prophetic, uh, something prophetic that shows us that Mankind, the, the, the years of mankind is going to be six days. God created six days, rested the seventh day. And the Bible tells us that there's going to be a millennial reign in the earth for a thousand years. So we've got, we've got six, uh, we've got uh, 4,000 years up until the birth of Christ. Now Christ has been crucified. We've had 2,000 years, a little over of the church age and so we're according to our figures we're a little over the 6,000 years we're living on borrowed time so the last seventh day is the thousand year millennial reign of Jesus Christ on this earth and, and folks we're, we're living there we're, we're at this there's no denying this it's uh, folks, it's going to happen. And the question is, are you ready for it? Now, nobody gets ready for it by being super 
see super good. Nobody gets ready for it by giving a lot of money to the church or a lot of money to some uh, charity. Nobody is going to be ready for it by anything they can do. You must be born again. I'm telling you, when that trumpet sounds, it's going to be over that quick. There won't be one single true Christian left on this planet. And when that happens, all the restraint, all the, all the restraint holding back evil and wickedness and, and violence and anarchy is going to be removed from this earth. It's going to be horrible to be left behind. There's only one way to be ready. And that is to repent of your sins and to ask Jesus Christ to save you, to tell him, Lord, I am a sinner. And don't think you're not a sinner. The Bible says if you've broken one of the Ten Commandments, you're a sinner. Matter of fact, it says if you've broken one of the Ten Commandments, you're guilty of breaking all the Ten Commandments. You've broken the law. And you're a sinner. And every person on this earth is born a sinner. You can't, you, there's nobody listening to me that has not cursed or has not lied or has not been jealous or has uh, disrespected their parents or uh, every, every single person. There's nobody perfect on this earth. And so everybody needs a savior. They need the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. The only hope that you have of not being left behind when every Christian is gone. How does that happen? You have to believe that the Lord Jesus Christ died for your sins and that he has offered to impute his righteousness to you. If you will admit that you're a sinner and you'll come to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I have not one hope whatsoever of making heaven without you. Would you please forgive me and come into my heart? And you know what? The Bible says if you will do that, he's faithful and just to forgive you of all unrighteousness. That's his promise. And he can't lie. Oh, I, we're going to pray together. Listen, if, if, you're, if you're a backslidden Christian, if you're lukewarm, if you're not a Christian, let's pray today and ask Christ to forgive us and come into our hearts. Let's pray together. Father, we, we do, we believe that your coming is at hand. The Lord Jesus is going to come. And, and Lord, I, I, I need to be ready. And I know that I've broken the laws of God. I'm guilty. You said if I've broken one, I've broken them all. Lord, I ask you to forgive me of every sin, to come into my heart, to cleanse me and save me and make me a new creature. Lord, I want to be born again. And your word says if I'll ask, you'll do it. And Lord, I'm asking. And so I know you have done it. And Father, I thank you for it. I praise you for it. I'm going to find a church and get started living for God. And Lord, I thank you for this word and this time and for you saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Folks, God bless you. I didn't quite finish this message, and so I'm going to maybe uh, deal with this again uh, come next Sunday. But God bless you. Thank you for watching. If, you, if the word blessed you, please share it on Facebook, watch it on YouTube, and uh, check our website. And God bless you. We'll see you next time.